Okay, the timing, 7 p.m. We have the continued public hearing. Uh, Tom and Ruth Jackson seek a special permit pursuant to section 5.4.2 and or a variance pursuant to section 4.1.1, table 4-1 of the code of the town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, chapter 275 zoning to allow the demolition and reconstruction of a pre-existing non-conforming single family residential structure on a non-conforming lot. Properties located at 54 Neponset Heights Avenue in the R40 Residential and Agricultural District and a Zone 2 Water Resource Protection Overlay District. Uh, because Dave Brown is not here tonight, um, Kurt having been here at the last meeting and having participated will be the voting member along with Lorraine and me. Although Kim was not here last, I guess we were in August, not last month, Kim is able to uh, participate in the, uh, in the discussion but won't be a, a voting member. Okay. Thank you. First thing that I want to do is to have a motion to reopen the public portion of the hearing. Motion to reopen the hearing. Second. All in favor? Okay. Jeff? Is this okay? <clears throat> you want me to Whatever is you? most convenient for you. Whatever I have some most papers convenient. to shuffle, so if you would indulge me, that would be I mean, My glass is foggy either way, so I can't see it. <laughs> I, no, I, I have to take mine off so I can't read. <laughs> So um, I'm Jeff Lovely. I'm here representing Tom and Ruth Jackson, and also here is their uh, surveyor and, and project manager, who's Peter Lavoie. We, we came in in August and presented the project, and um, I think your board wanted to see us go to conservation and then come back. So that's what we have done. The Jacksons, I have not participated in the, in the conservation proceedings, but the Jacksons have had two meetings with conservation and obviously we have the the Jones and their attorney Mr. Marinelli here tonight in opposition um, and I've detailed in a, in a letter that I've submitted to you uh, some of the updates on the project as a result of the conservation hearing and also to uh, accommodate some of the Jones's concerns so it's really not a conservation matter, but one thing that the Jacksons have done to try to accommodate the, the Joneses' concerns is they removed the entry door, which used to be halfway down um, on the Jones or east side of the home, and now they propose to move the garage over uh, to the westerly property line and leave room for a front entry. And I've submitted plans that show that tonight. Uh, these, these are plans that I think the Jacksons or a family member have prepared. They're not full architectural plans, but they do show um, a little bit of an elevation of that end. And I also submitted um, a revised first floor layout, relocating the, uh, the, the entry door in this way required some substantial changes inside. And um, this is generally what the Jacksons are proposing to do, uh, upstairs and downstairs. They, at this point, they do not intend to finish anything upstairs except for the loft. They're going to stub the bathroom simply because now is the time to do it with regard to venting and all of that. So the second floor bathroom will be prepped piped and stubbed off, but not constructed at this time. Um, in terms of addressing some of the Joneses' concerns, probably the primary thing that they've been able to do is move the house back five feet from the lake. Uh, Mr. Lavoy was able to reconfigure the septic system, uh, make it a little bit smaller, push it a little bit closer to the road to facilitate that move closer up to the um, street and away from the lake and that's also to address the concerns of the Conservation Commission um, with regard to the location of the house compared to the lake however this project as proposed actually you know creates some some benefits um, even compared to the current home um, primarily because the roof will now recharge into the soil they're going to they're going to run the, the roofs um, gutter system into some underground recharge pits. And then in terms of, of conservation, um, they're really not going to do much within the 50-foot zone closest to the water. You can't do anything in 25 feet. 
uh, Peter Lavoie showed the 50 foot buffer zone. I think pretty much all they're going to do is create a walkway down, which is going to be uh, granite and stone, sort of crushed stone between granite to create the uh, you know steps going down. And then they're going to, by hand, remove some invasive species that are located in, uh, in the buffer zone to allow the native species to sort of reestablish themselves. Um, and we, we believe that things with conservation are going uh, relatively well. And also, um, since, uh, since that first meeting when we received Attorney Marinelli's opposition, I don't, I don't know that it needs much comment, but the cases that Attorney Marinelli cited, I think, really just kind of lay the foundation procedurally for where we are. Our bylaw already contains the language that was really at issue in each of those cases. So I think now Attorney Marinelli and I agree, this just comes down to your board's determination as to whether this project is substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing home. Um, what I also did in the letter is I, I laid out every uh, rubric that I could find that would be relevant to what the zoning concerns are. Um, you know, I cited some of the often quoted language in the legislative history of the Zoning Act. Why do we have zoning? And it's, it's listed in the letter, but I didn't see anything in those concerns which underlie the entire zoning rubric in, in the state that this project would offend at all. It's not creating blight. It's not creating overcrowding. It's not creating a safety condition or traffic. It's a single family home. Um, you know, the, the, the key step is to determine whether this is substantially more detrimental. Foxborough also has some other language in its special permit bylaw that allows your board to look at community needs, traffic flow and safety, adequacy of utilities, neighborhood character and social structures, impact on the nat natural environment, and potential economic and fiscal impact to the town, um, to which I suggest that uh, the only one that could be really relevant here is the neighborhood character and social structures. And because uh, the others, this is just sort of a small single family home that's replacing another small single family home, although it is on a tight lot. Um, so we think that it's not only not a detriment that this house is actually a benefit, simply because it replaces a dilapidated old home, removes, and I, d I don't really know what's in there, but removes whatever is in there, whether it be lead paint, asbestos, um, you know, an older septic system, doesn't, you know, the drainage just runs right down to the lake, et cetera. Um, and then it's gonna improve property values in the neighborhood. It's not gonna increase traffic over the existing use. There's ample parking on site. Um, it's just a change to the neighborhood. So then I looked and all of the data that I analyzed in my letter was based on Foxborough assessor's records, um, which may or may not be perfect, but I, to, to kind of compare apples to apples, I used them all and I, I looked at that neighborhood, which I, I said is the 22 homes in that area from what used to be Ann's Boatyard down to the end of Neponset Heights Ave, both sides of the street. And, and the takeaway is that this house is not unusually high, it's not unusually large. Uh, it's, it, there are multiple other garages. I believe this house, if constructed, would be the fifth or sixth uh, largest home in that neighborhood. And uh, it, it's, it's really going to, it's, the neighborhood, like every neighborhood, is changing over time. This one is changing more slowly than some others. And I called out that, you know, it's a, it's a, some of them are bungalows, some of them are colonials, mm -hmm. capes, 
possibly five or six uh, raised ranches and other types of homes. Uh, this one is, is sort of a cape style, no dormers on the second story. Um, I, you know, I guess it, you can call it two stories or you could call it a story and a half. Uh, the garage, with that elevation, we, we did want to point out that the garage isn't a full two stories, it's only one story. Lowers a little bit of the massing along the street. Um, so because, you know, the lot size is not unusual, they're all small. The house size is not unusual. This, you know, I'm sure your board sees proposals to build three, four, five thousand square foot homes. This one in, in real terms is 16, 1700 square feet if you include the first floor um, and the loft, which is really, they really want the loft because there's going to be a beautiful view from the loft over the lake. Um, you know, the, really the only thing they can do to, to help the Jones is to push it back as they did. Uh, they also want to be close to the lake and enjoy the you know proximity to the lake and the views and everything like that. So we, um, we hope that working with the neighbors in that regard and going through conservation, et cetera, will uh, assist your board in, in finding in favor of this project. Jeff, uh, I've got a few questions, and then I want to read um, an email that I got from you know, Jane Pierce um, relative to where the Conservation Commission you okay. know, is right now. In, in that regard, they, they have not issued an order of conditions as of yet, correct? correct? And I think you had a meeting with them next week? I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, Diane, are they supposed to complete? Yeah, the, um, we're, they were waiting for the DEP number, mm -hmm. and that arrived, we met on a Monday, and it came on Wednesday. So um, Jane has prepared an order of conditions that will be um, voted on and signed on Monday. Okay, fair enough. Jeff, um, what is the gross floor area of the house? And I, I know that you said that at maximum build out, right. habitable, habitable could be as much as 1987. Okay. Um, and I think that right now what you're proposing is 1598, 1600 in that range. Correct. I, I calculated, and I may be wrong, about 2400. Are you including the garage? Yeah. Okay, so what I, what I did was I looked at the assessor's records, mm -hmm. and very clearly none of the assessor's records referenced the garage space, but the garage right, that, is... The garage, uh, deck, basement are not considered to be... Right, habitable. so I think, the, I think the deck is 28 by 12 approximately. Yeah. The garage is 24 by 24, which I think is 576 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was comparing the way the assessors do it. Uh, this house is I think it's is this on a slab? No, it has a basement. Mm -hmm. Okay, didn't include the basement. Mm -hmm. So I was really trying to calculate using the exterior of the plan, mm -hmm. the living area, the footprint. I wasn't trying to subtract yeah. from walls or anything like that. But yeah, you could you could gross it up depending on what you consider gross floor area mm -hmm. to well over 2400 mm -hmm. square feet because if you add five was it 576 to mm -hmm. 1987 but I, I don't know that that's okay you know well maybe um, I, I know we're here because of habitable floor area and, and, and not gross that's one of the criteria in section 5.4.2 to get us here. But I was just curious as to gross, um, and I'll perhaps explain you know, why later. Um, initially, the initial plan showed that you were 7.24 feet from the easterly so, uh, side yard. And right. now I think you're showing 6.87. Has the house been moved closer? What, what, what's think, the discrepancy? Well, Peter can address that, but I think that was, when the house was moved back mm -hmm. and he was we'll moving forward towards towards the street yeah right back or forward yeah so t toward the street away from the lake um and there was actually a little discussion with mr and mrs jones about some confusion over the lot line mm -hmm. um peter took a closer look at it mm -hmm. 
and lined up the house so that it is perpendicular. I believe that all the lot lines in this house are uh, aligned with one another. Mm -hmm. And um, he came up with 6.87 instead of 7.24. Okay. Anything to add to that, Peter? And all I'd like to say is on the, on the um, previous plan, uh, the deck wasn't as wide, and that eight point, that 6.87 goes to the deck because the deck was pushed out to the outside of the house. Mm -hmm. And then just to let you know, I, when I went out there the second time after, talk, after going to the congregation and uh, receiving a survey from uh, Bay Colony, I went out there and verified their points because a surveyor from Bay Colony sent me a plan, and I went out, I verified the survey that was done for um, the neighbor's lot, and I reorientated my lot lines um, to match that survey that was done. Excuse me, Barney. They can't hear him. On oh, I'm sorry. On Zoom. I heard you. <laughs> um, so I'll just reiterate that again. So um, at the conservation meeting, uh, concern came up with the property lines. Um, also, I received an email from a surveyor that um, did a survey on the abutting property to the east uh, from Bay Colony. He sent me his certified plot plan um, and mocked all the monumentation that he had um, staked out in the field. Mm -hmm. So I went out there and relocated. I'm sorry. Uh, can I hear you? Is, is that mic on? It is. It's them. Issue, Are they on mute? You should be able to hear us. 2020. I'll send him a message. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. So by, by locating the monumentation that the previous surveyor did for the abutting property to the east, the lot line on the east adjust, was adjusted. Um, and the lot line on the east is not parallel to the lot line on the west, so there is a little skew mm -hmm. that goes into um, 54, a lot. So from the front of the house is farther away from the property line, but now the back of the house is a little bit closer, and then they made the deck a little bit wider, so that's what what the the dimensions okay so it's, it's a combination it's, of, of, a, of a, a survey yeah and the deck being wider right and i've gone out there again and relocated the same monumentation for the second time um because there was a question you know there's still a question about that and it, it you know everything i located the first time is in the same location so my survey corresponds to the survey to the west and that's what i wanted to hold because you know the uh, abutter to the west has concerns about the property line, mm -hmm. so that's why I wanted to hold the monumentation on that on that property line. Okay. So can I ask you just to clarify? So is the southeast corner still at that 7.24? Yes. Okay. All right. So so the, there is a little is a skew to the yeah. to the to the east um, property line. So I guess it's approximately you know. Four inches, a little bit less than five yeah, inches. Really, but, but that's yeah. that's that's the way the lot is. Yeah. You know, in the we held we held the west property line six feet because we wanted to push it away from the east as well, the most we could. Okay. The the Jeff, as you know, the building commissioner had raised you know, a couple of questions. That that was one of them. Um, the second question was he was asking about the bedrooms because this plan shows two bedrooms. First plan showed three. I think what you were talking about, three, what I indicated to Mark, and I think you also responded to it, was the third bedroom was a potential bedroom, was not something that was being constructed at this point in time. Correct. So there's really no difference between this plan and the first plan in that regard. Right, although I, I would say during this process, the Jacksons have indicated to me that they have e much less intent to build that out now mm -hmm. than they did when they got into this um, it, it sort of it, it is what it is but it's it's going to be there and it could be used for some type of future expansion for yep. sure or any other type of room right. any other kind of room as opposed to the right. red room right. yeah questions well, um is there a full basement in this property there is yes full basement. so it's the same footprint as the first floor Okay. Yes. So, Brian, just to 
you know, clarify, I just did some quick calculations here based on these drawings. So the first floor, exclude, not including the garage, is about 1404 square feet. Mm -hmm. That'd be the same for the basement. The uh, second floor is about 512, and the garage is uh, 576. And that would mean that the that the actual lot coverage would be about 1980 because it'd be the 1404 plus the garage 576. Mm -hmm. So it's what about 3896? Uh, if you added that all of it up, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, and what, what do you know roughly what the height is the uh, the peak height of the garage and the house itself? I think what I we talked about last time is it's approximately from the gr from the grade at the basement we estimate that it's about 26 feet. Okay. I don't have architectural drawings on that. You know the way this the, the Jacksons initially were working with a modular home designer who came up with this it doesn't it had some dimensions on it but it, it doesn't have sort of peak height from grade, but we're estimating it, I think, at okay. 26. And the garage would probably be about half that, I would presume? Probably a little more than half of that. Okay. Okay. Lorraine? Um, so where's the entrance from the reservoir side? Is there an entrance from the reservoir? Uh, stairs up to the deck. I assume there'll be a slider and and, the, and the, there'll, there'll be an entry into the basement under the deck as well. And then um, just one question. I noticed I went and looked at the stakes today and I noticed that there's a retaining wall that the stake for the house is on the other side of that retaining mm -hmm. wall? Yes. How, I, I guess my question is how does that, um, looks like that wall is holding up land that belongs to the other property owner? Correct, yeah, so when the new house is constructed, the foundation will be there and the foundation will act as the retaining wall. So the object is to step the foundation. So the grade between the two houses will stay the same, but the foundation will step with the with the topog with the topography. Just curious how that was going to work. Right. So a foundation wall. It's a foundation wall that hold, you know you dig the foundation. The foundation holds up the material on the outside. So that's that's going to be this. It's going to that's what's going to happen. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, but I do have one, uh, just one comment. When I was out there as well today, you know, taking a look, um, I did run into Mr. Jones. He was in his yard as I was there. We explained to exchange a few pleasantries. Nothing of substance that would impact tonight's meeting. I'm not voting as well, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. Jeff, anything else? I don't. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Marinelli? Yes, sir. I assume it's you. I can't tell with the mask. So. I'm sorry? I said, I assume it's you. I'm not sure. I can tell with the mask. But. If I may approach. Yes. Good evening. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Peter. And I uh, just want to reserve any time that uh, Mr. or Mrs. Jones would like to say something. Um, now, when we first filed the opposition, I believe there was some mention of a variance, so that's why the issue, the explanation in the beginning of the uh, opposition. I just want to be clear on that. I think we understand and both everyone agrees, Jeff and I do, that the core issue is the substantial impact on the neighborhood. Um, and I think in the deliberations regarding this matter, uh, you have to focus on the impact on the neighborhood, not the benefit to the town of Foxborough. There's been some mention in the 
written record that's been presented as far as the letter of advocacy of the benefit to the town of Foxborough. But the focus is whether or not this is going to have a substantial impact, substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than existing. Uh, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. The other thing, and I think you touched on it, a few things, is that uh, the garage needs to be included because we're talking about the overall impact of the structure. None of these cases where the deliberation is over zoning, a special permit, I never see any case that distinguishes between habitable area and non-habitable area. Uh, so any reference to the assessor's map uh, as far as habitable area, removing a garage or whatever, is, has no impact in your deliberations as, and really is of no concern. Um, now, there are a couple things that are absent from the package that's been submitted and uh, what intends to be submitted, and I understand in fairness that there probably will be a more definitive plan, but we don't see a definitive plan. You know, there's such things as a sketch, a conceptual plan, you all know this as planning board members. If this was a subdivision, you wouldn't have somebody come in here with a sketch plan. They'd come in here with a conceptual plan, and they'd come in here with a definitive plan. And your deliberations would not be final until you had the definitive plan. A sketch plan, a conceptual plan is not gonna do it. Uh, and I believe my brother uh, did already acknowledge that, well, we don't have architectural drawings. Now the significance of that is, and it has to go with amongst our concern, is the height of the structure. We know that there's a restriction under the tables, I believe it's table 4.1, residential area, I believe it can't be any more than 35 feet high. That's not the issue. The issue is what is the actual height of this structure going to be? And when we submitted our opposition, initially we submitted, it was a shade, a shade report or a shade study, uh, and I'm no expert, we didn't retain an expert, but there's, uh, access to Rhino, there's access to technology where you can just plug in the, in the address, you can plug in the height of the structure, you can put in the existing structure on there, and that's what we did. So we have a plan view, and I direct your attention to this shade report. There's the existing structure, and then there's the proposed structure. So right away you can see just by the pivoting of the proposed structure, the pivoting of the proposed structure so it's perpendicular to the existing structure next door, the Jones's home, it creates a significant impact on the shading. But now you add 24 and a half feet, even if you look to 30 feet, we understand they're saying 26, but certainly we can all agree that if it is 26, the impact is gonna be marginally greater than the 24.5. So we anticipate submitting something that's gonna be 26. But again, would like to see a definitive plan so we know exactly what the height restricts, what the height is of the structure. So I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think this speaks for itself. It absolutely does. And under a special permit, uh, yes, there are criteria for the special permit under the zoning bylaw. I understand that. Uh, and I would say that um, the uh, visual concerns, the visual consequences, um, to the properties in the vicinity of the abutter uh, are of concern and that would fall under section subpart four, neighborhood character and social structures. Uh, it doesn't fall under the traffic flow or safety. Uh, it, might flow under, it might be under five impact on natural environment as well. So our concern is that we, are, we don't know what the visual consequences are in the worst case scenario at 26 feet, let's say. Or is it more than 26? All we know right now, it's possibly 24.5. And there's case law 
where an abutter is considered an aggrieved person under 40A section 17, which has to do with uh, exhaustive of remedies and judicial review, but certainly an abutter is considered an aggrieved person for purposes of standing where there is an issue of visual impact or uh, visual consequences. So we're very happy that, you know, the property may be raised next door and they've made some adjust adjustments as far as the configurations, uh, as far as the entrance to the property, proposed property, but we still can't get away and can't get off of the impact from the shading, from the roof line, and we just want clarification on that. Um, because after all, you're dealing with a structure that we all agree is as close as seven feet. And I don't think any of us would want to have a structure that extends that length, or that height, almost seven feet away from your window, from your house, and from your side yard. Uh, it just is undeniably a huge shading issue. Uh, and that's the concern my clients have. That's a concern that some of the other neighbors have. Um, you know, it doesn't matter the benefits to the town of Foxborough. Again, the impact is whether it's going to be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. So with that, I want to defer to Horace or Roberta if they have any comments or concerns that they want to raise. Horace Jones, 56 Neponset Heights Ave. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Jacksons for doing the improvements that they, they have already made. But my main concern is, is that uh, the, the house is being awful, built very, very close to the property line. I, I think right now, as it stands with the, the property line, as we're saying it exists, it's 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 closer to five feet than it is to six feet, so they're going to be less than around six five to six feet from my property line, and I only have about uh, nine or ten feet to the property line from the house, so it's very close. The other thing is that the size of the house, uh, <clears throat> when you look at it, not from the total footage that uh, was read off, but the house is with including the garage is going to be uh, 76 feet long and my house is only 33 feet so i'm going to have a view of a of a home that uh, is just that's my view the home i'm not going to have any any more green it goes beyond the house on both sides and uh, it's going it just obstructs the green space that i have to look at now the, uh, the big difference between that how the old house and the new house is, is that they're, they're being built 90 degrees apart. Um, the new house is going to go this way where the old house went this way. And uh, so I'm going to lose a lot of light. And that's basically the size of the house that, 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 that's concerning me and, and the closeness to the property line. It, uh, we're going to have like a, an alley in Dorchester to get between the houses when it's, if it goes up. And we don't have much space to begin with. That's all I have to. Okay, okay. Question, Jeff, for you, Mr. LaVoy and the Jacksons. Um, architectural plans? Have they been? Have any been prepared? No, no. They're they're trying to go through this. It's going to cost you know thousands to f to do final designs. And I would point out, you know, to Attorney Marinelli's comment about a subdivision. Uh, Peter's plans are not sketch plans. What I was talking about sketch plans are 
the uh, elevation and the two floor plans that we submitted to try to show you where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Those are sketches. But in a subdivision, the proponent rarely provides architectural drawings. They show the approximate location of the house on the lot, and that's it for subdivision. So the, the comment about sketch plans, I, I understand the issue with architectural plans. With regard to that issue, I think if, if the board is inclined to grant this petition, it could be conditioned so that the building inspector, um, upon application for a building permit, or your board, could determine whether there was anything that was material or a substantial departure from the floor plans that we've submitted. And if so, we, we could come <clears throat> back in here. I think that would be a fairer way to go. You know, they've, they've purchased the lot, they've spent money on permitting, but they don't want to go to full design on a house before they know if it's going to be built or altered or anything like that. So that was my, my question about architecturals is, you know, you, I know you asked for floor plans, so we came up with kind of the best we could under the circumstances. Um, I would like to clarify another thing. Peter and I were looking at the initial designs that uh, the modular that were designed, and it shows um, that the house is approximately 23 feet or so above, above the front grade. Mm -hmm. And you could, so um, I have to confess that I've actually never been able to decipher Foxborough's determination of house grade and house height. <laughs> but if the board were inclined to grant the petition, there could be a condition on height, say, above the grade on the south, which is the you know front of the house, um, in order to protect that concern. But I show it. Peter and I were trying to think about what it is, but it, it, there's a line that shows 22.5, and then we estimate, and there may be another foot or so for floor height. So 26 is sort of a, a liberal um, estimation of what the height might be. Um, I would I would point out that. You know, when you look at, when you consider the space between the Jones house and the Jackson house, you know, you'd, con you'd consider both side lines at setback. So it's really about 12 or 13 feet um, between the two homes. The, the, the Jones's walkway appears to encroach on the Jackson lot. I don't think the Jacksons will ever ask the Joneses to remove it or move it. I don't know, but I don't think that's a problem. And I would point out that the Jones uh, easterly sideline is 3.3 feet. So this is a neighborhood where there are multiple very narrow sidelines. Um, and that, you know, it's a, it's a larger house. It's consistent with the house that someone would want to build given the level of investment. You know, if you look at the first floor floor plan, it's not a huge house. It really has one big room, kitchen, dining, living, and two bedrooms and two bathrooms. You know, it's not a, a mini mansion or anything like that. Mr. Marinello, you were raising your hand. Did if, if I may, I just wanted to bring up, I only referenced sketch. Can you come to the microphone, please? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Changs are here now, so. <laughs> I only reference sketch plans, conceptual plans, and definitive plans for purposes of showing. In your process, you have multiple hearings. Normally, something is not granted in one hearing. And there's several steps. And so, of course, there's give and take. There's, you know, there's additional plans provided with more information, more detail. We certainly are not asking for finished architectural stamp plans because that'll cost a lot of money. But we want something better than what's being proposed because the original <clears throat> plan that was provided said, and I, I'm very clear pretty much on this, elevation, not elevation may be subject to change or something along that line. So it, it seems like it's, it, you know, as an attorney, as zoning members, claim board members, you have, to, you have to always be concerned about what 
is the exact figure I'm working on. Planning board is enforce, enforcing zoning. And zoning has a table on heights. We're not saying it's gonna be 35, we know that. But let's identify and let's be clear on exactly what the height is gonna be, you know? Uh, and don't be confused with the 23, and I appreciate the explanation, Jeff, because you have to figure in the elevation of the foundation and the grade and all of that. So if it's 26 that he's saying, we're gonna go with 26, but we'd like to see something a little more definitive on that. Um, and that was all, so, but thanks. Oh, and the other, one other thing, um, there was mention that, you know, uh, yes, the purpose of zoning is to absolutely uh, use a piece of property, someone homeowner buys a piece of property and they certainly are allowed to develop that piece of property, there's no question about that. However, you always have to be concerned about the best use of the property, not the maximum use of the property. There's a distinction. So we're, we're focusing here on what is the appropriate and what is appropriate for the neighborhood, for the abutter, not maximizing. And that's, I think we're, we've carried that uh, in, our deliber in our presentation, so thank you. Anybody else wish to be heard? <clears throat> I'll ask you to identify yourself by name and address. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. that yeah, good. that's good. Yeah, sorry, you know, I was, I was late. Somehow the technology, something not working. So, you know, I just, you know, came over here right, right away, okay? And uh, so maybe some Mr. Singh talk about it before I came, but I don't know. So I just say what I plan to say. Tell, tell us who okay, you my are. Name? I know who you are and know where you live, but for the moment, <laughs> please tell us. I'm Henry, and my wife, Cindy. We are from 52 Nipangsai Heights, so it's just next to the 54. Mm -hmm. And first, uh, I really like to uh, welcome our new neighbors, Tom and Ruth. And chapter 275, zoning document, table 4-1. All residential structure shall conform to the dimensional regulations. The minimum side yard shall be 15 feet, one five, 15 feet. Since it is a pre-existing non-conforming single family residential structure, so it should not expand to the side. Again, the width of the new house should, should not be extended. Also, section 5.4, non-conforming single residential structures may be reconstructed or extended. Such extension does not increase the habitable floor area of the structure by more than 25%. <coughs> not more than 25%. I believe these statements have a, their important meanings to our community, especially in, this, in those areas. The house are very small, the uh, land is very tight. Okay, and this important meaning you know, to our community because of the safety and because of the privacy. Again, because of the safety and the privacy. However, the, to my best of my knowledge, the proposed house is almost double of the existing footprint, which does not even include the garage area. In summary, for the reconstruction of 54 Nipangsai Heights, certainly first, I really welcome our new neighbors. Second, according to the regulation requirements, the width of the new house should not be extended 
and the footprint should only be increased by 25%. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to be heard? Okay, I'm going to lose my voice now. We'll see whether my voice or my glasses go first. Um, shortly after oh, the... Oh. Okay. One more comment. One more comment, sorry. Uh, the house, uh, I mean, if I remember correctly, the, for the first lonely meeting, my understanding from the meeting was the house was not extended the, in terms of the width was not extended toward the, my house. Today, I just saw the, whatever the plan, okay, it does extend it, further extend it toward the, uh, my house. Especially, you know, there is a property uh, stick, okay, it's, it's extended to the, uh, toward my house from the existing structures. Okay, thank you. If I, if okay, I there's no encroachment, further encroachment on the side yard, correct? No, it's, it's staying at six feet. I believe uh, the 52 Neponset Heights, just by way of comparison, it's probably also a five or six foot sideline. Recently, relatively recently built home. That one is uh, a two-story colonial, 21, 2,132 square feet not counting basement, not counting garage. It has a two-car garage. Uh, I believe that one was built in 2011. And it was you know, so that's a more of a type of thing that could well continue to happen in the neighborhood. You know, it's unusual that they would criticize some, somewhat of a similar pr project. But and that was a special permit, not us as members, but this board approved. Um, on August 25th, we received a letter from Arthur Baldoff of 61 Ponset Heights Avenue, and he said, and it's a, to the Board of Appeals, to my attention, this letter is about the purpose of the home to be built on Lot 20, 54 Ponset Heights Ave. Because I was not involved enough to be notified about the meeting and not recognized to speak as such, I did not want to see another very large house on a very small lot, as was allowed at 52 Ponset Heights Ave. Eliminate the garage or downsize the house. This is not a suburb of a city like Boston. Now, I indicated earlier I would, even though we're not a conservation commission, um, indicate you know, to the uh, audience um, where I've been told the conservation commission currently stands or where the board has been told the conservation currently stands on the matter. Um, and what I'm going to do is read the comments that um, Jane Sears Pierce, the town's conservation agent, uh, made to the issues that she had raised that were brought to our attention uh, in, in August. So first I will be reading her, in a sense I'll be reading both her August email and her response to me, which is dated October 14th, or her, her response to the uh, August email that's dated October, on, on October 14th. Um, Number one, she had said that the proposed house foundation may not extend any closer to the water body than the current foundation. She indicated that this has been done. Number two, if the foundation and other impervious areas are proposed to be increased, then square foot calculations will be required for the lot's current versus proposed impervious surfaces. And she indicated that this has been done. Number three, no grading, tree clearing, or other alterations are allowed in the waterfront's 25-foot no activity zone, with the exception of repairing and reta re repairing retaining walls, uh, working from the upland side of the wall only, and she said not proposed at this time. Uh, second, restoring, naturalizing the NAZ by planting native species, done rebuilding stairs, steps to the water and or, and she indicated that's done, and vista pruning, the selective cutting of branches to create a water view. And she indicated, she didn't indicate anything on that. 
Uh, number four, if the lot is narrow, tight, like this lot, any work proposed and approved in the 25 foot no activity zone must be completed, then approved in writing by the commission or me, meaning Ms. Pierce, before any foundation work or construction can begin. And she responded that no work other than invasive plant removal by hand is pro proposed in the 25 foot non activity zone. For your information, the 271.4 floodplain elevation has been added to the plan, but this elevation should not have any effect on the proposed project. Five, the use of dry walls, dry wells or rain gardens to infiltrate clean roof runoff and or LID techniques, in parentheses, rain gardens, vegetative swales, etc., for driveway runoff is usually requested and, requested and encouraged. And she indicates that dry wells and a gravel driveway are proposed, so this has been done. Number six, decks that extend closer to the water than the previous foundation may be allowed, but their footings will usually need to be dug by hand. And she indicated this has been done. Seven, riprap is not allowed near water bodies, but native rocks may be used to help stabilize slopes in a naturalized way. And she's indicating non-applicable. Eight, 25 foot, no activity zone bounds may be required to notify current and future homeowners that no activity is allowed beyond the bounds. And she indicated not applicable. And nine, the commission's goal is for projects to result in a net environmental benefit through the use of LID techniques, previous pavers, decreased lawn areas, 25 foot, no activity zone restoration, landscaping with native plants, new septic systems, et cetera. The proposed plan appears to create a net benefit. So my understanding is that although they have not issued their order of conditions, conservation is, is satisfied. And that being the case because we had obviously continued the matter to get feedback from conservation, I think we can proceed unless anybody has any questions, concerns, or other issues that we need to address with them. If I can add just one, one thing. Yeah. I, I watched the conservation meeting um, when it was rebroadcast or on YouTube. And I think by moving the house, they actually were able to save some trees that otherwise could have been cut. Mm -hmm. So I think I, I heard Jane saying that that was a good thing and <clears throat> to use construction techniques that kept heavy equipment off of the, the drip edge area and stuff like that. So that was another, I didn't hear anything about Vista pruning either, but the, the site changes do actually help a couple of the existing large trees remain. Do we have any other questions? I do not. Take a motion to? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> I guess I'll start. Um, I am satisfied, satisfied that the requirements for a special permit have been um, complied with. Um, you know, I recognize that the larger footprint of the proposed residence in relation to or in contrast with the existing structure um, is going to both increase habitable area and increase um, gross floor area, and, and I recognize that that will obviously make a denser use of the property than at the present time. Um, I recognize as well that this is going to cause some shading on the, the Jones property. Um, it's going to reduce some light and some air and their ability to enjoy the sunset over the reservoir. Um, and I recognize that that is detrimental to the to Mr. and Mrs. Jones. By the same token, Mrs. Ferranti's not here tonight, but she complained last week or last, uh, last session that she would have to look at garages and also have her view of the reservoir uh, in, impaired. Um, clearly, that's detrimental to, to both those families. But I don't see it personally as being substantial, number one. And number two, it affects two neighbors and not the neighborhood in its entirety. Um, there is going to be some improvement 
to the neighborhood and to the town by the um, elimination of a home that is in poor physical condition and its replacement with one that I think will be will be attractive. Um, and I recognize that the although the house itself, the proposed house itself, is going to be considerably larger than the current home, the habitable area is not significantly larger than other houses in the neighborhood. It is significantly larger than some, but not, not all. Um, looking at the houses that are on the abutters list, I took a less expansive view of the neighborhood, Jeff, than, than you did. Um, I believe that five houses, there, there are 15 properties with houses on the abutters list. Five will have greater habitable area than the proposed home. One is roughly the same within a couple of feet of it, a couple of feet. So we're, we're pretty much in the middle as far as, um, as size. So although there is a substantial increase from the current house to the proposed house, um, I don't see that as being substantially detrimental to the neighborhood because we're really within, within the middle. Um, the reason I was concerned about gross floor area, not just for the issues that Mr. Marinelli raised, but I, I wanted to be able to compare gross floor area for this, for the proposed house with others in the neighborhood. And again, looking at the abutters list, it, um, and, and assuming that, that Kurt's calculations were pretty much you know, on the mark, close, yeah. um, I think there are four houses that have larger gross floor area. Than, uh, than this one. So again, although there, there is that increase, I don't see any substantial detriment um, to the neighborhood. Um, you know, again, we're, we're dealing with, throughout the neighborhood, undersized properties. And that's most apparent on the side, on the Neponsa Reservoir side of, um, of, of the street. Um, these are narrow properties. Um, no matter what you're going to build, it's go that, that's larger than what is there now. It's going to, um, to increase um, in, increase density. Um, I believe that there is a broad range of, um, of homes in the neighborhood. There's no specific type of home. There's no home that's characteristic of the neighborhood. So I don't think that there's any, uh, any adverse consequence by building a home of this nature um, you know, to, the, uh, to the neighborhood. Um, looking at the criteria that we uh, set forth, you know, for special permits in section 10.4, uh, again, there's no single style or design of homes in the area um, because we're replacing an existing home. We propose to replace an existing home with a new one. There's not going to be any uh, impact on utilities or public services, on traffic or safety. Um, I think the conditions and requirements that the Conservation Commission will be imposing are going to address environmental issues and concerns. Uh, the town is going to benefit by the fact that there's going to be a, an improvement in the quality of the home, an improvement in the physical characteristics of the home, and there'll be some minor benefit to the town and additional uh, tax revenue. Um, so ultimately, I don't think that there's any adverse consequence to the, uh, to the neighborhood as a whole. There's, I don't see any adverse effect on the, uh, on the character of the neighborhood as a whole. With that, uh, who wants us to go next, Lorraine or Kurt? I, I would just really you know, echo everything you just said, Barney. Um, I, I don't see an adverse effect on the neighborhood itself. Um, recognizing, of course, that neighbors do have their concerns, and I, I, I see, I understand that, but uh, I do agree with Barney uh, that the the adverse effects are, are minimal, and there are houses that are of similar size in the neighborhood, and that the uh, you know the context of the neighborhood is not one type of house, so it's um, it's 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 in keeping in context with the neighborhood. Lorraine, so. Definitely hearing the concerns of the neighbors about the proximity of, of the homes. I think that the, one, the change in that entrance, I hope, will help alleviate to a certain extent um, 
the neighbors on that side. And, um, you know, again, I, uh, they're the two and the one directly across that would obviously be most impacted by this construction. But, you know, I think for all the reasons in terms of, you know, the dimensions in the general neighborhood appearance and how it fits in with, with all of those, you know, I have to agree with what's already been stated that uh, there is not a detriment to the neighborhood and um, you know again it does meet everything that's set forth in our you know special permits require you know section that we are looking for in terms of benefit and uh, impact in general and I think especially since Conservation Commission has essentially approved um, the placement of it now, it moving back, you know, I, I think, um, you know, it should be approved for the special permit. Kim? Nothing, thank you. Okay. Um, I, I think I want to go a little bit out of order or out of our um, typical practice. I think what I'm, I want to make the the motion. I've got some conditions, and then we've got to discuss whether any other should be should be added. So, a motion would be to grant the requested special permit by finding that construction of the proposed resident will not be residence will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood in which it exists than the existing nonconformity, and determining that the adverse effects of the proposed resident residence will not outweigh its beneficial impacts to the town of Foxborough or the neighborhood in which the subject property is situated in view of the particular characteristics of that site and of the proposed residence in relation to that site. The conditions that I want to impose are number one, the proposed residence shall be constructed shall be a two-story structure that is 27.5 feet in width by 52 feet in length with habitable floor area at full build-out that shall not exceed 1,987 square feet. Um, two, the location of the proposed residence, residence shall be shown on, and I'll in the decision give a title to this, but on the plan, the resource area plan. Um, such that the proposed residence shall not be set back less than, I think, Jeff, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, 55.51 feet from the Ponset Heights Avenue. That appears to be correct. Okay, shall have a rear yard setback that shall not be less than 62.56 feet. Well, that goes, yeah, that's to the, to the wetland, to the retaining wall, not to the back property line, but that's. But that's fine. That's, okay. that's, the, clo that's, that's the closest. That's the closest place, that they yeah. approved, so. Okay. And shall have side yards of not less than six feet on its westerly side and not less than 6.87 feet at its closest point on its easterly side. Um, the proposed resident shall comply in all respects with the conditions and requirements imposed by the Town of Foxborough Conservation Commission. That's number three. Number four would be that demolition of the subject property's existing structure and construction of the proposed residence shall be restricted to Monday through Saturday between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Um, what I want to talk about is the height and more definitive plans, mm -hmm. suggestions. Well, I think we would need some, at least a, you know, a plan that is a little bit more developed than, you know, what we have in front of us that's going to show actual dimensions, actual heights, you know. It doesn't have to be a set of construction documents, but at least something that's, you know, schematic or developed in some way that shows us the, uh, the dimensions. And with that, if there could be a material list on what the exterior uh, materials would be.
So if we were to say definitive plan showing the dimensions of the proposed residence indicating exterior materials, dimensions obviously would indicate height. Mm -hmm. um, anything else in that regard? We'll show the exact side dimensions on that. And once we have those plans, would they come, would they speak with the building commissioner regarding that? Would they come back to us? Well, I think what I'd like to do, what I, what I would like, and I think what we've done in the past is specify a date by which we would receive them so that they could be attached as an exhibit to the decision. Um, Can you sense as to how soon you can get something to that, that effect? So I think it would be preferable to condition it, as I, as I mentioned before, that no building permit may be issued until the following are submitted, including the materials list, because we have to have this permit. We have to see if it's appealed. Mm -hmm. We have to go through the appeal, and if nothing, if we don't trigger that, um, you know, sooner than later, you know, we so procedurally, no no objection at all to giving those plans, um, and then that's why initially I proposed that the building commissioner could make a determination as to whether anything about the dimensions, floor plan, et cetera constituted a material change to the issued special permit in which event we would have to come in to your board to modify it I mean and again so we just need to get to the point where we have a special permit that gets filed with the clerk you know does it get appealed or not um, rather than sort of an open-ended situation that's that that's what I would propose that you know, and, and I don't know, um, I don't know how to do it, or or we could um, add more more detail in terms of what's shown on the plans that we've submitted now. You know, it's more the dimensions than the approximately detail. 26. Barney's got, and Barney actually on your first condition, mm -hmm. it, can we add? the garage to that because you were you were calling out the dimensions of just the house itself mm -hmm. just to avoid any confusion there um, but so you understand that we we just need to get to that point where the special permit is is something that could be filed with the clerk and then a subsequent determination could be made if we have to come back in All right, let, let, let's get this one straightened away and then we'll go back to the first one um, So if we were to say definitive plan showing dimensions of the proposed resident residence and indicating its exterior materials to, to be submitted to the town of Foxborough Building Commissioner and subject to his satisfaction as a condition to the issuance of any building permit. Satisfactory? That's, that's fine, yep. Could we possibly include in there um, exterior materials in keeping with the neighborhood? And to be approved by the building commissioner, do we need to want to say something like that? I, I just think there is pretty wide variety of mm -hmm. materials. Mm. I mean, the house next door is um, modular. It's a few doors down. I'm sorry. A few doors down, the modular is. But okay. We're, we were consider we were expecting it to be vinyl sided, so there's people with the. You know, shingles, there's people with mm. vinyl, there's people with lots of different things. Yeah, I don't think there's any okay. single type that, that, right. that we'd oh, say. Yeah. Right, absolutely, yeah. right, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. All right, so let's, let's say, again, definitive plan showing dimensions of the proposed residence, indicating exterior materials to be submitted to the Town of Foxborough Building Commission and subject to his satisfaction as a condition to the issues of, of any building permit. All right, let me go back to the first one then. Um, so the first one, 
was that the residence shall be constructed in accordance with the proposed shall be construct shall be a sorry shall be a two-story structure that is 27.5 feet in width by 52 feet in length um, with habitable floor area a full build out not to exceed 1987 square feet um, so if we were to say a two-story structure that's 27.5 feet in width by 52 feet in length with a garage that is 24 by 24. 24 by 24. It's not mentioned. And then I, and then the deck I believe is is 12 by 27 and a half. That includes the stairway. Yeah, it's flush with the. I'm sorry. Well, the deck includes a stairway, but it's all in, it's the same width as the house, deck yep. and stair. So what you're saying now is that a uh, proposed residence shall be a two-story structure that is 27.5 feet in width by 52 feet in length, uh, with a garage that is 24 feet by 24 feet, and a deck that is 12 feet by 27.5 feet. Mm -hmm. Um, with habitable floor area at full build out that shall not exceed 1,987 square feet. You want me to read the rest of them again? I, I don't. Anybody want to read the rest of them? Well, we all said. That's good. Anything else anybody can think of? Just a question. So the basement that was calculated in there is not in that 1,900 square? No. Basement is not considered habitable? Not, not habitable. Okay. Even if it's a finished basement for okay. some strange that's reason. That's what I was wondering. Mm. Well, I'm happy that that's the case. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, the assessor's office doesn't consider it to be habitable floor area. Okay. I think attics are not, um, decks are not, um, garages are not. Anything else? Okay. Uh, motion? Uh, motion to approve special permit for 50, for, forgot. 54. 54 Neponset Heights Avenue. Second. All in favor? I would expect within the next two weeks we will have prepared and signed the decision. Uh, Mr. Marinelli, you know that once it's filed with the town clerk, there's a 20 day appeal period. Um, you certainly have the right, as does any party in interest, to appeal. I would really hope that, um, as disappointed as it may be, you know, rather than avail yourself of that right, you welcome the Jacksons to the neighborhood with you know, friendship and understanding. Thank you very much. Thank you. such a tight neighborhood. You know. I have a question. Your footprint is already 1,400 square feet. How can you make it two-story less than 19-something? So there. the second floor is only about 500 square feet. You believe it? Minutes from the last meeting, I made one correction on what Diana had written. She yeah, put, too many, she put too many zeros on. I put too many zeros in the existing house. I said it was 8,000 square feet. I <laughs> wish my clients would put too many zeros in my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they would be as amended to be approved. So, well, anybody else have any questions? Or? Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. 
Motion to adjourn? No, I got, we got two more things. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> Second? All in favor? Okay. Okay, I've got to make a uh, statement. Um, I think everybody saw the email that um, the Galanti sent. Yeah. Relative. You should have it there. Yep. I mean, has anybody not seen the email? I don't think I've seen it. It's under your letter. Who are the Galantis? As you remember, as you may remember, you, yeah, you were here last month. Mm -hmm. um, why don't you quickly read it? Okay. Have you seen it? I read it, yes. Okay. Yes. And you have. Okay. spelling mistakes <laughs> so anyhow let me let me read this statement um, the zoning board of appeals in 2015 approved a comprehensive permit authorizing Hanover RS limited partnership to construct 248 apartment units in five separate four-story buildings on June 9 2020 the board received a request from Bazuto management the property manager for the apartment complex on behalf of its, of its new owner, MCPF Foxborough LLC, to modify the comprehensive permit to allow construction of an exercise area for dogs owned by apartment residents. The board, in accordance with applicable law, considered such a request as a general business matter at a July 16, 2020 meeting. Because the comprehensive permit request was strongly opposed by neighborhood residents, with the board's decision subsequently subject to litigation, the board determined that the requested modification was substantial and accordingly should be subject to a public hearing. The public hearing was held by the board on August 20, 2020. Two residents of the apartment complex appeared at the hearing to speak in favor of the proposal. No one appeared at the hearing in opposition to the matter. An email to the board from Diane and Eric Galanti of 2 Robert Street was read into the record of the hearing. Mr. and Mrs. Galanti expressed opposition to the proposed modification, principally stating, among other things, that in the initial permitting process, Hanover did not work with neighbors to lessen the impact of the apartment complex by refusing to decrease building height or the density of the project. The board approved the requested modification with specific conditions imposed. Mr. and Mrs. Galanti forwarded an email to the board on August 21, 2020, expressing their right as town residents to give our input, disappointment in what they believe to be disparaging comments that were made at the hearing about them and their neighbors, and requesting a formal, a public, formal public apology for such statements. By letter dated August 24, 2020, I informed Mr. and Mrs. Galanti in my capacity as chairman of the board that I would address this matter during the general business section of the board's next meeting. I have given this matter considerable thought, and perhaps more than it is due. As stated in my letter to Mr. and Mrs. Galanti, I take seriously the work of, that the board performs and how it is perceived by town residents. I am, and I believe justifiably so, proud of the board's work. The responsibility of the board is to render decisions that it believes to be appropriate under the circumstances. In so doing, we consider the opinions, positions, and viewpoints of all who appear at our hearings or who express their concerns to us in writing. This was done both with respect to consideration of the initial comprehensive permit request and as reflected by reading Mr. and Mrs. Galanti's email into the record at the modification hearing. The board recognizes the, the right of town residents to express their opinions. We understand and recognize that town residents may disagree with our determinations. We recognize the right of town residents to appeal and thereby contest our decisions by means of litigation. I am disappointed that Mr. and Mrs. Galanti considered certain of the statements that were made at the modification hearing to have been disparaging. That, however, was not our intent. 
Accordingly, I will neither apologize personally nor on behalf of the board for such statements. Anybody else want to comment? It was very well put. But who, who made the disparaging comments about the dogs or about the neighbors? I can't, I, I can't recall. I think that might be a matter of how one perceives the comments. Was it from somebody who was attending the meeting? Or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Any other business? No, I don't. Um, there was someone inquiring today about getting a variance for exterior staircase for a garage, but I'm not sure if she's going to pursue it. Okay. And we've heard nothing from Frank Spillane. Okay. Oh. I haven't even seen him, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, several weeks, uh, it was more than several weeks ago, probably a couple of months ago now, um, Frank Spillane met with the building commissioner and me on a proposal to add an apartment build, not an apartment building, an apartment unit to a building that currently has four apartments. Um, and his question was whether it needed a variance or a permit or what have you. I don't know if they've decided not to go ahead with it or, or what, but that, that's out there. Yeah, I uh, have a possibility. But other than that, we've got nothing, nothing cooking. Um, really going ahead into the future, I would not be surprised if we have one and maybe two comprehensive permit requests next year. Hmm. Um, one would be, if we have it, um, at some point we'll have it from the um, housing authority, mm -hmm. uh, the property on Walnut, Walnut Street. Street. Mm -hmm. And there's a possibility Mike Sagon's property on Moore Street, mm -hmm. and I think he wants to, um, to develop that, and there's a possibility of that as well. So, mm -hmm. time will tell. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. Motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor?